Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to animate parallax background images with Divi's scroll effects. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and then click on add new. So we're going to give this page a name. I mean, we can name it whatever we want. So I'm just going to call this split and then click on use Divi Builder. So for this tutorial, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to click here on start building. And uh, we're going to go with a single column here. And in this column, we're going to add a text module. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then over here in the body, I'm going to add the letter P. Next, I'm going to come over here to background. And uh, I'm going to go to this third tab and add my image by clicking here on background. So the image I'm going to add is going to be uh, this image right here. Now, if you want to use a totally different image, it's up to you. Now, the dimensions of this image are 1,222 pixels by 1084. So anything close to that will work really well for this. So now I'm going to click upload an image. Next, uh, I'm going to use my parallax effect. So I'm going to click here on use parallax effect. And then the method is going to be CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and select CSS. Now let's stylize the text that we've just added onto this module by coming over here to design text. And here we need to uh, change our fonts to Monster Rat. So I'm going to search for it here and select it. Next here on uh, the style font, I'm going to set it to all caps. And this color here is going to be white. And the text size is going to be 100 pixels. Next, on the line height, I'm going to set this to 1 EM. And for the text alignment, we want this centered. So I'm going to go ahead and center it. And then I'm going to add a padding to the top and the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to spacing. And the padding is going to be 250. And as I mentioned, I'm going to apply this to the top and the bottom. So now, as you can see, we have our letter there centered. We also have our image and we've also added our padding. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save this and then I am going to head over here to my row settings. Now in here, we're going to click on design sizing. And then first of all, we're going to use custom gutter width. So let's activate it and set this to a one. Now the custom gutter width is the space between the columns. So I'm going to go ahead and just pretty much remove the space between the columns. Now for our width, I'm going to set this to 100%. So I'm just going to drag the slider all the way to 100%. All right. So now that we have this all set, I'm going to come back over here to content and go into column one settings. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon. So now with that selected, the next step now is to make a few customizations. So to do that, I'm going to go all the way to the advanced tab and then click here on scroll effects. So what we're going to start off here with is the horizontal motion. So I'm going to click here on the tab, activate this, and let's add all our settings. So over here, I'm going to start here with minus two. The midpoint needs to be zero. And then over here at the end, we need to set this to minus two as well. Now here, we need to split the midpoint here to uh, 60 and 40. So I'm just going to drag this to uh, 60. And then this one here needs to be set to 40. All right, so pretty much this is looking great. The next step now is to go to rotating. So I'm going to click here on rotating, activate it. And I also need to make some adjustments. So let's start here with our starting rotation. And this is going to be at 20%. And then the final one here is going to be at minus 20. And again, I'm going to split this to 60 40, just like what I did before. There we go. So now it's 60 40. And that's looking great. All right, so pretty much I am happy with this. I'm going to come back over here to our main row settings. So what I'm going to do next is to duplicate this. So I'm going to do that here. So now we have two of these, as you can see here. And as I mouse over these, you can see that they're splitting. All right, so now that I have the second one added, what I need to do is to go in and make some adjustments to the second one that we've just added. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, go to advanced. And then I'm going to uh, go to my scroll effects. And this time I'm just going to go to rotating. And here we need to uh, remove the minus and just remain with just the 20%. 
and the minus needs to go here at the beginning of the rotation. So I'm going to add my minus 20 degrees. And over here, the 60 and 40, just leave it as it is. It's fine as it is. All right, so what I'm going to do next now is to go back. And again, I'm going to duplicate this to get our third column. And then I'm going to click here on the third column settings. Next, I'm going to click advanced, scroll effects. So what we're going to do first here is to go to our horizontal uh, motion. And we need to disable this. And then next, we're going to come over here to rotating. And uh, here, we're going to uh, set this to 10 degrees. On the left here, it needs to be set to 20 degrees. And 60, 40 here in the middle. That is fine. And then we're going to go back to our column settings. Now, we need to uh, set up column 4. And to do that, we need to come over here to column 2 to create our fourth column. Okay. So what we need to do here is to duplicate it like that. And then we're going to come over here to column 4. And click on this gear icon, advanced, scroll effects. And here now, what we're going to do is we are going to go to our horizontal motion here and activate it. Okay. So with that activated, I'm going to remove the minus two here and uh, the minus there as well. So the starting offset is going to be two and the ending offset is also going to be two. And over here, 40 and 60 should remain the same. Next, let's go to rotating. And over here now, we just need to make some minor adjustments. So our starting rotation is going to be 15%. And then over here is going to be 20%. And leave this at 60, 40. All right, so now we need to add column 5. So to do that, we're going to come back over here one more time. And this time, we're going to go with column 3. So this is the one that we need to duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Click here on the gear icon, advanced, scroll effects. So here we're going to go to rotation and uh, we just need to make some minor adjustments as well. So here we need to set this to a minus 15 degrees and pretty much we are good to go. So I'm going to go back. All our columns now have been uh, set. I am going to now save this. So as you can see here, everything pretty much is in place. So what we need to do is to just go in and just add our font, just update it. So we want this to read power. Okay, so I'm... Um, as you can see here, I'm doing inline editing. But if you want, you can actually go into the text module and do it that way. So I'm just going to add my text in here. And now it says power. All right. So now that we have all our letters in place, the next step now is to go to this middle one here and uh, change it to a different font. So I'm going to click here on module settings. And then I'm going to go to design text and this time we're going to look for a different font or a different variation of monster Rad. so this is the one that we're going to go with so i'm going to select it and you can see here it has a different style right so the next step is to add my color so i'm going to come over here and click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here and then i also need to update my text size so i'm going to scroll down here and set this to 150 right so with that all set i'm going to go to my text line height and set this to 100 pixels as well. So pretty much I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save. And we need to go back to our column 1 settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my row settings. And then click here on column 1, design. So what we need to do here is to add some uh, rounded corners to our first column. All right, so here we're going to go to border. And over here on the top, we're going to set this to 100%. But you can see here that this has been applied pretty much to all the sides. So the ideal way of doing this is to break the chain and then apply this only at the top. So now you can see this has been applied just to the top. Now let's go to column five settings and pretty much do the opposite of what we've just done here. So I'm going to go back over here, click on column five, design, border, and break the chain and add my 100% to the bottom right. So now you can see here we have this uh, shape that we've just created by just doing that. All right. So um, what we need to do next is to add a background color to the whole section. So let's save this and save this one more time. Now we're going to go into our section settings, click on background 
And this is where we're going to add our color by just pasting it like that. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to add our top divider. So I'm going to come over here to design dividers and uh, I'm going to choose the style for the top divider. And the one I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Next, I'm going to add my color. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool and paste my color, like just like that. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I am using, I will leave a link to the show notes below. All right, so now that I have that all set, the next step now is to add my top divider height. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 650 pixels. All right. So moving on, I'm going to also going to add my bottom style here. So I'm going to click here on the bottom tab and uh, pretty much we want the opposite of what we've just created. So I'm going to go ahead with this one here. Our divider height is going to be 500 this time. And also we need to adjust our color and uh, I've used this color before but it's pretty much uh, a very dark gray. There we go. All right, so now that I've added my color there, this is looking great. So I'm going to save this. And you can see here that just mousing over this, uh, it is uh, moving. And this is the break apart. So the next step now is to just come over here and add a regular section on the bottom and also on the top. So I'm just going to add some padding to this so that we can see our final design. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and drag this to the top. There we go. So all I have to do now is to just save and see what our design looks like. So I'm going to save this and exit the visual builder. There we go. So now you can see here as we scroll, it is breaking apart. All right, so go ahead, try it out and see how this works out for you. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified when we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.